Well, welcome everybody to the Ed Swanson Head Coaches Show. As always, sitting down with the head coach of Sacred Heart Women's Basketball, Ed Swanson. And conference play has begun. You guys go one and one this week, and uh, it starts off with a loss to St. Francis, Brooklyn, 56 47. But to your credit, you come back against LIU, Brooklyn, have a frustrating first half, and then go off in the second half. A 17 0 run after the tough shooting performance uh, against LIU or rather uh, St. Francis, Brooklyn. How good did it feel? How much of a relief was it for your ladies to kind of go off on that 17-0 run and uh, run away with a victory here on Monday night? Well, well Saturday's game against St. Francis in New York was a, a frustrating afternoon for us, but our hats really have to go off to St. Francis in New York. I thought they really did a, a heck of a job with their game plan. They came in here, played well. We don't, we don't lose that often in here, and uh, um, they did a great job. And the great thing about conference play is uh, everything's personal in regards to there's a lot of mutual respect between the teams, but there's only one trophy at the end of the year. So games kind of tighten up this time of year, January and moving into February. And uh, the best thing about conference play is that we were able to bounce back on Monday night. We were able to get back on the court 48 hours, and I was uh, excited with the way we played and uh, how we bounced back on Monday night against LIU. Well, now three times in uh, your Division One program history, you've come back as the defending champions in conference play. You know what they say. Everyone looks at the defending champion, and they want to circle that that part of the calendar and, and kind of gauge themselves where they are. It's a great gauge for them. Do you get that sense, and uh, how do you respond to it? And Like I say, you've done it a couple of times before, so you have some experience about it. What what do you have to do during conference play when teams always are bringing their best against you? You know, I, I think it's history. You know, I, I, we don't utilize that all that much, but uh, we do know that, uh, um, you know, like we're moving on to play Quinnipiac on Saturday, and they're the first place team. And, uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to bring the, the energy's already built in. You don't have to build it up. And, uh, and like I said, on Saturday, I thought St. Francis, New York, just played with more energy and more effort and more passion than we did. They, they, we lacked the intangibles that they brought. And, uh, you know, like I said, conference play is conference play, and uh, it, it, it's it, everything tightens up a little bit. And, uh, um, you know, I'm not, I don't know whether other coaches are using that as motivation, but uh, um, we got to make sure we protect ourselves each night for that. With emotional play comes physical play, and LIU Brooklyn is a very physical team. But Morgan Merriman, uh, one of your seniors, with her second double-double in that game, 20 points, 10 rebounds. She's probably physically the strongest player on the team. She's really, really improving this year down in the low post, playing that physical game. How important was her play, especially physically, in that game against LIU Brooklyn? Well, it's important. Uh, it's important to get points in the paint, and uh, you know Morgan's not the uh, the typical post player. She's somebody that can put the ball on the floor. She, does, like you said, she does have great strength, but she also has great drivability in terms of she can go by bigger posts. Uh, um, in order for us for to be successful and, and be in position at the, at the end of February, she's going to have to put together a, a big year for us. Uh, um, you know, we're looking for our other post players as well, Angela Bland, and I thought uh, Larray Entenes did a, did a terrific job coming off the bench and giving us some quality minutes down the stretch. And how about Gabby Washington? Uh, another double-digit game. She's been in double figures in every game this year. How nice is it to be able to rely on that? Kind of look at a, a schedule and you know Gabby's going to put in the points. Well, you know, G Gabby's still going through the transition to being that, that, you know, that top scorer, that top person on the other, the opponent's marker board. And, uh, um, you know, we need other people to step up in other areas. We need other scoring in other areas in order to relieve some of that pressure off of Gabby. Because I think Gabby does at times feel a lot of pressure, uh, a lot of weight on her shoulders in terms of putting those points up. So I'm excited where she is right now and how she's handling that. Um, but we need some help from others. All right, let's talk about the Quinnipiac game because that's a great matchup. As you say, they're number one, they're nine and two. Uh, only two losses this year, one of which was to Georgia Tech, which uh, you know you know very well with your trip to the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, but Quinnipiac comes in as the number one pick in the coaches' poll. You guys, number two. There's the whole geographical thing. It's right up the road. It's always a great matchup between Quinnipiac and Sacred Heart. How much are you looking forward to this game on Saturday? Well, like, you know, we talked about conference before, records, you can just kind of throw out the window. What you've done in the past really means nothing about what you're going to do in the future. And uh, and Saturday will be a fun game. We, we enjoy, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge, and uh, it is a road game up at their place. And, uh, um, you know, the number one offensive team in the league, uh, Quinnipiac, against the um, number one defensive team in the league. So we're really got to try to, you know, control the tempo of the game, control the glass a little bit. And uh, um, we have the utmost respect for Quinnipiac and what they've done up there. And uh, it should be a whale of a ball game. All right, and it sets the tone for a four-game stretch on the road. CCSU Monday, 
Also, uh, always a fun matchup with a geographical rival here in Connecticut. Then the long trip out to St. Francis and the, the probably the most grueling trip of the year out to Western Pennsylvania. So how nice is it to have in the middle of a four-game uh, road streak or a four-game road trip two games kind of locally for some uh, good geographical rivals? I'm glad you know our schedule because I don't look that far ahead. I'm looking forward to Saturday's game, and then we'll move on from Saturday's game to Monday game. And uh, thanks for reminding me we have that trip out to uh, Western PA looming in a, in a week and a half. Hey, no problem. That's what we do. Coaches got to look one uh, game at a time. Players got to look one game at a time. We can look a little bit forward. But no matter what, we are looking forward to the next game against Quinnipiac. Good luck on Saturday, and uh, go get them. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate it. Ed Swanson, head coach of the Sacred Heart women's basketball team. So it's the Pioneers and the Bobcats Saturday in Hamden, one versus two in the NEC.